In depth tonight, corrections officials have yet to say where convicted killer Gerard Price will continue serving his prison sentence. Price was arrested in New York earlier this month. He had been released by a court order in March before the Supreme Court ordered him back in custody. Our Dustin Doherty has more on what led up to him being released and then returned. It's now been one week since convicted killer Gerard Price was put back in South Carolina custody, but it's been nearly three months since the Supreme Court vacated the order that released Price and ordered him back into custody. Uh, still, we haven't seen the court's opinion that explains why exactly the justices ruled the way they did. And as we continue to wait, we're looking back at the hearing that put Price back in prison. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, Your Honor, let me say this. The state failed. The state failed in this process. A straightforward admission from Attorney General Alan Wilson in the face of the South Carolina Supreme Court. The hearing held on April 26th, one month after the release of Gerard Price. Price was found guilty of killing Carl Smalls Jr. in 2002. He had served 19 years of his 35-year prison sentence when he was released in March by a signed court order. At the center of that order, three men. Price's attorney, Todd Rutherford, Fifth Circuit solicitor Byron Gibson, and now retired judge Casey Manning, who signed the order. Rutherford pushed for the early release because he says Price acted as an informant and provided law enforcement with critical information about other inmates. The order was signed in December of 2022. Once Price was released months later, the attorney general says that's when he was made aware of the situation. So he took the order to the Supreme Court, arguing it was illegal. He says it broke state law because a public hearing for the order was never held and the victim's family was not notified. The General Assembly is giving the court authority to do something, but they're saying if you're going to do this, you have to follow these th the requirements in the process. The solicitor's office failed to do that. The, the court signed the order anyway. The order is void on its face. The victim's rights, a centerpiece at the Supreme Court. They have a right to be informed of all proceedings involving the, a, a release of an inmate. Uh, my understanding is they found out the day that the defendant was released from the department. Right, so those two can be intertwined, and, and what you're saying about the Victims' Rights Act is not, they're not just entitled to be notified that there's going to be a release. They're entitled to be notified that there's going to be a hearing, which of course there wasn't. Correct. A.G. Wilson asked the court to vacate the order, but the questions kept coming from the justices. Why did the solicitor, who represents the state, send the order to Judge Manning and not notify the victim's family, nor hold a hearing? I can't speak for Solicitor Gibson. Well, he's Why here. Do? I understand that he's here. I can't speak for Solicitor Gibson. All you're doing is just saying this is a bad thing. Do well, something about it. That's a mess that y'all made, and you're asking us to clean it up. Uh, my main concern in this case is the absence of notice to the victims. That just hits you square in the face. But the fact remains that um, it wasn't Mr. Rutherford's responsibility to do that. It was, it was the state's responsibility to do that. I'm not trying to say the state is not at fault here, but in my position as the chief prosecutor of the state who has a duty to supervise solicitors when I became aware of this, when our staff became aware of this, we reached out to the solicitor's office. We tried to find out as much as we could. The order was also sealed. Rutherford said he made the motion to seal it to protect Price's identity. He felt Price's life would be in danger if other inmates found out how Price helped authorities. That is why the proceedings appear to be secret. And a lot has been made under a sealed order. Sealed order was not meant to keep the justices from seeing it, the attorney general, nor anyone in law enforcement. It was meant to protect the identity of someone that was still in the Department of Corrections in recognition that telling the world, and including the victims in this case, what had happened and who was involved, that it would put Mr. Price's life in jeopardy. As for Judge Manning signing the order, Supreme Court Justice George James said he would have taken a different action and more should have and could have been done. I was a circuit judge, as was everybody up here. Would I have signed this order? No. But it was signed. And it was not, uh, it was, the state did not appeal from that order, correct? Well, we didn't know about it, Your Honor. Well, now, I'm, I'm, Mr. Gibson knew about it. Mr. Gibson knew about it, yes, sir. Okay, he did not appeal. Had 10 days to appeal, correct? Yes, Your Honor.
Now the Supreme Court would go on to vacate Judge Manning's order in a 3-2 to two vote. And again, Price is now back in South Carolina. And we have request a comment from everyone involved. And we've only heard back from Solicitor Gibson's office, which stated they do not have a comment. Now, as for what's going to happen to Solicitor Gibson or Judge Manning, we asked the Attorney General if something will be done. Well, his office responded in a statement, quote, Our office cannot confirm or deny the existence of any investigation, but we always review all available options at our disposal. And of course, we're following for any developments. Justin Dory, Fox Carolina News.